guys, welcome to Play Talk. This is actually part two of an uh, interview with Captain Electro. Uh, it's a continuation of our last show, so stick around and enjoy enjoy watching it. I mean, the fact that it's got skulls and stuff on it, so uh, it could it could go and it could coincide with some other things that I've seen in the laws that talk about your intentions. Right. I have right. seen Perfect. that right. a lot in mm -hmm. every state. My mother lives in Ohio, and they are vague, just kind of like North Carolina is. They, they, I think they have an old, an old blade length limit, but they talk about your intentions and where you're coming to and from and where you're using it and stuff like that. So if I had this one, this little lunch four, and the cop pulls me over, hey, kid, you know that's illegal. Oh, man, I didn't know. You know, I got it right down the store and everything. Uh, didn't have any skulls on it. Coming from work, what do you use it for? I'm sorry, sir. I use it to open boxes. I had no idea. He, he might let you go. And I'm not... We're, we're going to put this out there and say we're not lawyers. Right. <laughs> don't trust Don't trust us to, to say, you know, uh, if I carry that, he'll let me go. Might not. And it, and it might get to the point where he talks... Where Scab talked about those 30 days in jail. You think you can do 30 days in jail? Okay. When you come back to work... Like I said about my mask, and they say you're not really representing us too well. We got to let you go. Right. Then you got to go find another job. So you might survive that, but you don't want to deal with it. So I I tend to leave those at home, and I've I've done it in the past. I know people have said, "Well, I'll carry everything I want and, and damn the law." I've been there. Okay, I've done that, and I will say now. You shouldn't do that. I'm, now I'm going to say I'm going to change my uh, perspective on that and say if you really want to represent the knife community and you really want more laws that that allow more spring knives and stuff like this, you've got to represent the knife community a little bit better. And yeah, I know some people will comment and say, well, most people get stabbed in an altercation with a steak knife or something from home. Well, we don't really need to add on to that. And something like this is not really... I mean, what are you going to do with that? I thought it was cool because I had two of them, and it makes a skull. There you go. But it's cool. really a, an art piece. It's more of a collection than a than a a real user. Can I really use that for a good work knife? Kinda. If I don't stab my foot with it, I think this would be a better work knife because I can do my thing, and close, close it, it up, up, do whatever I got to do. One you know, I don't have to put two hands on it. But regardless. They pull, they pull you over, and if they even know what it is, well, look at there, didn't even, didn't even deploy. But if they even know what it is, they hmm. may take it. Yeah, and that's not cheap. No. Is that the Troodon? Yes, that is the combat Troodon. So that's what five hundred bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Easy. And then when you start getting into yeah. the add-ons, it's more. But yeah. Well. Uh, what? Battle, battle songs, same thing. The the problem that I see with the battle song, even even as I have so many of them, I'm just like, why would you even want to carry that anyway? Because it can be a good work knife because when you hold it, both handles in the in the hand, it's not going to close really. But as far as self defense and as far as using it, you know you're going to want to do this. And when you do this and you drop it in your foot one good time, it, it then it just takes all the all the utility out of it. It's just not really a good utility knife. And as far as defense, it has no guard. So why would you even want to use that for self defense? You'll stab something and slide up on it. It's a toy. Well, That's a toy to me. I want to lead up to that, but I want to back up a little bit and just I just want everyone to know you know who's watching blade talk and we when we cover topics like this with everyday carry and all that i want everybody to understand that we're just trying to we're, we're not trying to have anybody break the law in fact it's completely the opposite we want everybody to understand the laws and to really be aware of what you're doing uh before you do it uh because we don't want anybody to get into trouble so um, it's it's really the opposite of breaking the law. We want you to follow the rules and, and understand what your laws are and what you can do and can't do. And unfortunately, like we're saying, like I was speaking with Kat, the laws are very vague. 
And it's uh, that's why the comment you made, Scab, about having some maybe some police officers comment in different states, I think that would be incredibly valuable. And I wish they would do that if they are watching. Uh, because, listen, it, it's it's a cry out for information and it's a cry out to just to, to know what we can do and can't do. And when you said, listen, it's a toy, listen, basically uh, people have to understand we're knife collectors. We love our knives and we look at them as uh, you know, in terms of collecting them, we love them. We, we uh, the contour, the art of it. I mean, me personally, I can speak of my swords. Okay, I love katana. I love swords. I but I also love the history, the artistic element of them. There's so many reasons why I like swords. I don't like swords to use them for self-defense. I don't like swords to be carrying them around or anything like that. There's a artistic element. There's a reason why I collect them. I like them. And that's what people have to understand about knife and sword collectors, uh, for the most part, I would say. A large majority of, of us, I think. Wouldn't you agree, Scab? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really not a collector. I have a nice collection. Um, I, I, I think you're a collector, you. Scab. <laughs> well, here's my thing. I use my stuff. I right. don't do of wall course. hangers. No, of course. Um, will there come a time when I do? Sure, sure. Cap's got some knives. You've got some swords. I've got some knives. We're just not using. But I want to kind of use that to talk about this a little bit, too. We love knives. That's why we carry them. And I'll show you real quick. I'll make it quick. I'm trying not to have a lot of breaks in the speech. I carried this today. I carried my SE Avispa. I carried my 0350. And I carried the one Cap gave me, the Medford. Now, when I carry this knife, and I carry it every damn day of my life, every day of my life, if I ever show anybody, which I do, one of the reasons I carry a bunch of knives personally is because I have a knife channel. I'm a knife reviewer. The more I've done this, the more people ask me about knives. So I, I do carry these for a reason. When I carry this one, people go, my God, that's a big, and, and I guess it is a big knife. It really is. It's a beautiful knife. It's a Medford and Cap. First time I think we've ever talked, man, I, I teared up when you gave it to me. I appreciate it so much. But people see this, man, and they freak out. And I'm going, well, that's not really the biggest knife I carry. But but that's the beauty of living in Florida. I can carry what I want. And I want to touch on this, too. And then I'll, I'll move along. Uh, self-defense and knives. And I did a video the other day on self-defense. And I want to explain this right here, right now. I am not against self-defense. Never have been. I've had to defend myself many many times have the scars from a lot of it i had to defend myself because i started the shit but nonetheless so i'm not against self-defense i'm not against someone saying hey this is a good knife for self-defense what i'm against is these jackasses on here that swear up and down oh you got to do this and they've never been in a damn fight in their life that's what i'm against because those people will get you killed mm -hmm. so that's kind of my whole point of it uh, Cap, I don't know how you feel about self-defense. Expound upon that, and then, Joe, maybe you follow Cap and, and just throw some thoughts in there. Sure. Go, Cap. So as far as self-defense goes, when you, when, you really, when you really look at that time frame of when you need to defend yourself versus what's effective, okay? Is, you're sitting here thinking, okay, is this going to be effective? Is this going to be legal? Well, bam, you're already done. You're already getting your head stomped in right there. And I'm Absolutely. like, I, I, don't, I don't have the training uh, person to person. Like, watching a UFC video online is completely different. Now, I do have a lot of firearms training. But that's completely different than hand-to-hand. -hand. And as far as the legality of it goes... The legality of killing somebody is the same. It doesn't matter whether you use a stick, a knife, or a gun. There's little things in there that you cannot get your brain to process that fast. You can't do it. Your brain can't say, okay, something's fixing to go down. Is it legal? Is it effective? Well, you're done then. I mean, so if you, if you didn't have some kind of plan to begin with and didn't have some kind of training experience, any of that I would say keep your mouth shut I would say try to run away I would try to try to find other things to do it's like uh, there was one firearms instructor that had some very good advice on it, it was a 
firearms instructor. He was talking about shooting. And the, I think the title of the video was about shooting and driving. And one of the thing, things that he said was, drive the car. Drive the car. It's easier for you to explain in a court of law why somebody got out, started something with you, and you ran them over, rather than you pulled the gun and shot through the window and killed them. Right. Drive the car. Drive away. Drive around them. Back up. Why'd you get in a wreck? Well, I was trying to get away from this guy right here. I mean, he, so that, that's basically, that's it. If you're training your, training your whole life to fight and defend yourself, which I've thought about this a lot. I have a lot of weapons that are dedicated towards self-defense, and it's gotten to the point in my life to where I have to question that and say, why do I have all of these? Why do I carry? I used to carry more guns on me than Scab carries knives. I used to have a, pit, a pocket pistol in each pocket, and it's gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, if I'm taking this trip over the weekend and I'm traveling from this state to that state, where am I really going to stop, and what time am I going to really stop that I'm justified carrying all of this stuff. A Glock with 17 rounds plus one, two or three of these, you know. Come on, man. It's, it gets to the point where it's like you're in a car that goes 80 mile an hour, drive away. It also gets to the point where when you carry all this stuff, <clears throat> it you down and it rubs into your hips and into your pockets and everything, and you're, you're thinking about this all the time. It really, it really wears on you physically and mentally. It, you have to ha you have to just accept some things that maybe you're not gonna you're not gonna come up out on top, or maybe none of that will ever happen to you. The, that, the that's things the that, big part of it. Pretty much, the, the things that people think that are gonna happen to them. Yeah, I, I would say there's another video that I watched. There was only two videos that I've really watched that had some very good self defense advice online. And the, and the second one was, I think, did I send you a link to one scab? It was uh, active self-protection, and it, it was talking about the law of stupid. Don't yeah, go to st did. stupid places with stupid people at stupid times. Follow the right. law of stupid. Right. Stupid Good places, video. stupid people yes. at stupid times. And that eliminates 99.9% .9 of the things that you would have to get into a fight about. Yeah. You go into a neighborhood at 2 o'clock in the morning, go into a bar with two of your friends that, or on probation, you're probably going to get into a fight. Right. If you're going to your aunt's house at three o'clock in the afternoon to go have Thanksgiving dinner with her, you're probably not going to get into a fight. You're probably going to be all right. <laughs> Absolutely. Joe, follow up on that. Cap, I, I spoke to you about this. Uh, we went, you know, uh, I think I left some comments on one of your videos and we went back and forth with it about it. I kind of feel, and listen, guys, I'm, I'm making a very generalized statement. I know everybody has their own specifics, but I feel in general, the people who are most concerned with self-defense, uh, things they need to carry for self-defense, what is the best for self-defense, is this knife good for self-defense, and asking all these questions over and over again and needing to have something on them. These particular individuals are, I feel, are people that don't, look to live good lives that they they're always looking over their shoulder there's a lot of paranoia and they're looking for confrontation i have never been the type of person that really looked for confrontation if there was a fight and i had no choice obviously i fought but i've always been the guy in my group that kind of like just kind of settled things down listen we don't need to do this here let's move on you can't have a freaking hothead guys you can't look to put your ego up here. You need to keep your ego in check, okay? And you don't need to end every, every argument. You don't need to end every fight, okay? Walk away from confrontation. Think about the repercussions and the, the result of your actions, okay? People like that feel like they need to carry. They need to have something on them because they know they're going to be looking for confrontation. There's a lot of people out there. We've seen them. We've all bumped into them in all our lives. I think just, you know what, that, that expression, cooler heads prevail, it's 100% true, okay? If you go out looking for trouble, trouble will find you, my friend. It will find you. So it's just, you just have to kind of, you know, approach your everyday in a different manner and 
not look for the trouble that's always going to be around the corner. And like you said, avoid the club at that, at that time. Avoid walking down, the, you know, the, that dark alley at night. You know, just be smart and just think ahead. And that's, that's the best way that I can look at it. I, listen, there's many specifics. Many people can't escape it and many people can't avoid it. And I understand that and I have sympathy for these people. But there's a lot of people who go out really honestly looking for trouble and looking for every any opportunity for them to blow up and get into a skirmish or get into a fight or get into something that they're going to have to regret later on. Well, I'll say this. I guess I'm the different one in the group. I've done things in my life I do have to kind of worry about it. However, I said this the other day in a minute, and I mean it now. I've never bought a damn knife for self-defense. I'll say this, and this needs to be said, and it needs to be all this tough guy shit and all this. Let me tell you something. If you ever kill somebody, it's with you for the rest of your life. And if it's not, you're a sociopath, psychopath, whatever. So all this tough guy shit sounds good until somebody gets hurt, and then you have to live with it. The other side is this. Learn how to handle yourself. And, and people have all kind of ideas on it. I can tell you this. If you think you're that guy, I've been in fights morning, noon, and nights. Nine times out of ten, it's something from the past. It is what it is. That don't really happen anymore. So will I pull a knife to defend myself? No. Will I pull a knife to defend Megan? If I have to, I already know I'm going to jail or somebody's dying or both. So while we talk about self-defense, I think you two hit two some great points. We have to be real with, the, with ourselves. We have to be realistic with ourselves. I've got a good friend, one of my best friends on this planet right now is looking at two, two years in jail because he carried a five and a half inch blade. Now, he has criminal associations and affiliations uh, as I can't say we all do, but as I do and others do, friends that are in that life. So it's biting him in the ass. And for anybody that wants to sit, oh, do two years sitting on my head, will you go ahead, champ? I don't want to do two days. I don't want to do two hours. I don't want to do two minutes because it boils down to losing your freedom. And when you lose your freedom, everything takes on a different spin. So guys, I appreciate y'all with that. Now, that being said, let's go into a fun side of it. Let's just have some fun with this and take the seriousness side out. Cap, what do you carry for self-defense knife-wise? Oh, God. <laughs> the, the, the legal as legal as I can get it because I'm going to be honest with you if we're sitting in a court of law and they're looking at these knives sitting right there as evidence yeah. and I got one that let's say let's just say that I got one that says browning on it and it's pink camouflage just for shits and giggles and they look at that one and they go he really used that for self defense yeah I guess so <laughs> but if I've got one that's got skulls all over it and the jury's looking at that sitting there oh yeah he was up or to that no combat troodon <laughs> he was up to no good yeah i think i think that's where when you get pulled over and you have things on on you like this that's that's where that judgment and that intention that we were talking about will come into play because it can be used even for things that are legal that's why i bought brought some strange things out here tonight uh, I brought the K bar pizza cutter, which is kind That's of strange. Awesome. <laughs> I brought I brought this spork and everything. So the spork intention now. Come on, now if I'm going to a club at three o'clock in the morning, yeah, officer pulls me over. We have no laws in my state about plastic knives, but he would look at that and go, no, no way. Come on, you're coming with me. But if he approached me in a park. And I had my stove there and I was cooking, you know, and I had some stuff that I was cooking up and everything and making a video. You all check out this knife and everything. He might let me go. The, the, same, the same thing goes with all, you know, all this stuff like razors. State law says that I can't have a razor on me unless it's for personal shaving. Well, ain't no, nobody that I know carries a straight razor. And, right. no, and nobody that I know is going to carry a personal. You're going to shave at home. Right. Yeah. You're not walking around shaving. So when it comes to something like this, if I'm coming from work 
I've got my work uniform on and everything. I've got my badge from work and everything, and I've got this. That's actually how I carry it. And I take it off, and I put it in the rearview mirror, and these knives stay with it because I use it for work. And it says my company name on the badge. I'm probably all right. But if I've got this wrapped up in a bandana and stuck in my back pocket, and I'm going you know, going nowhere good to do nothing good, I'm probably going to go to jail for that. That's considered a razor. Or at least but, get it confiscated. Yeah, if you right. if you want to have something for, and this is not legal advice, this is not good tactical advice either because it's horrible tactical advice. But I would say, the goofiest, cutest looking knife that you can poke somebody with and get away, that would be, I guess, okay self defense. It'd be what you wouldn't go to jail for. I guess ten years for if if they determined that it was real, legitimate self defense. Okay, but let's let's do this. Let's throw all that out. Let's okay. throw all that out now, just for fun. Just okay. for fun. What would you carry if you could carry? I don't give a damn if it's a Raja two, the Raja whatever. If you could carry one knife that you know, note it's the Wild West. What would you carry? <laughs> a dog right here. <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> love it. It would have now, to is be that this. legal in North Carolina? Oh, so no. Yeah, they're not legal anymore. <laughs> so the question is, it doesn't matter if it's. So the question is, it could be a fixed blade, it could be a folder, it could be anything. Just something, a physical sharpie object yeah. for self defense. What would I carry if I could carry? What anything? would you carry? Especially as restricted as New York is, just for fun, what would you carry? That's what I would carry <laughs> right at my hip. Nice. Right at my hip. Nice. Okay. If it's great in the hand, okay, that's what I would carry. Nice. If they if if you know the laws were different and you're able to do whatever you want, this is what I would carry at my hip. I actually I'm actually releasing a video that I actually just edited while I was waiting to get this blade talk done, and I'm gonna actually post it after I'm done. And uh, I actually had this at my hip and it looked pretty freaking good. I got to tell you, it felt, felt pretty damn good, I got to say. It really did. Now, here's Just, what's it, awesome. We can carry that in Florida. What? This? This? Or that? No, the, the, no, I can't carry the sword cane. I have one that I do. I do use my sword cane cap. Like, in the morning, it's hard to walk. But that kukri, right. that 15-inch that Brett Sumner gave me, I, I walked right down the road, walked in stores. You, you with can yeah, actually carry this at your yeah. hip? Are you Dude, serious? I can carry, I could strap a katana. Listen, a buddy of mine, he and his wife were walking one night, you know, down the road, they'd been to a party, and a buddy of his had borrowed one of his machetes. Right. So my buddy and his wife were walking back. They're not driving. They live down the road. They're walking back. He's got his backpack on, got the machete tucked in it. Cops pull him over, you know, because it's two in the morning. What are y'all doing? They, they told him, gave him the IDs. And the officer had the bag. He said, well, first, sir, I'm, I'm going to remove your machete. Put it on the car. They didn't have anything on him. He said, all right, guys, here's your machete back. And, and this is what he told him. He said, listen, I would prefer the officer had been in the military and was kind of cutting up with him, strapped it on his backpack like Molly style. Yeah, you can carry it in Florida. It's, it's cool. That's why when I worked at ETM, I always carried this every day. Gotcha. Every day. Is it practical? No. Is it fun? Hell yeah. I would love so that, to. That's, do, that's kind of the point. I would love to do an experiment. And I, I'm not saying I will do it, but I think it would be very funny if I did an experiment and I had somebody documented on camera. I want to see if I put this, um, basically, if I take this, you know, belt loop right here. Uh, I don't know, you, you guys can both see it, right? Mm -hmm. Put this on my hip. I want to walk down one of my main streets. And I want to see how far I can get before somebody stops me or a cop stops me or a mother yells bloody hell or something like that. How far I can get carrying this in my hip. And uh, Joe, you, you, you want to kick it up a notch, I'll loan you a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got a lot of those, Cap. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd, listen, uh, hearing you speak, Skip, I'm looking at I'm like, are you kidding me? Because I... It's unfathomable here. I can't. I can't even think about it. I mean, you ask, you know, what I would carry. I, I said on my last show, you know, 
I carry uh, my pillow and I carry my AD10. Why? Because they're under a certain blade length and I may not have a problem. Now, if I get into a fight and I pull it out, then, you know, I have intent to, to hurt somebody, yeah. I'll get in trouble. But physically carrying it, I'm under the blade length, I'm kind of safe. So that's what I carry. You know, not because I don't want to carry this, okay? I love this knife. It, it, it carries really well in the pocket. Actually, this Voyager XL actually carries better than the uh, than the AD10. So it's, you know, it's that's just what it is. You got you to follow whatever you can do and whatever you can't do. You got to be smart. But for fun, think, yeah, the Cooper is for Huh? Yeah, I got, yeah, I got you, one. You've got a Voyager. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're they're the big knives. The the cold steel big knives are comfortable as hell to carry. I think I loaned one to um, Isaac the new. He's got mine. But yeah, they're 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 super care. That Espada XL I got, believe it or not, it, it, and it's because I wear the uh, the camo shorts and all that. Incredibly comfortable, and you'd never know I had it. And that's a damn pocket sore. Now the the butt kicker is I'd go straight to jail because while you can carry a katana on your back, you can't conceal larger than a four and a half inch blade. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of the giveaway there. Going to back to that four and a half, that blade limit when it comes. Okay. So I told you that our laws are vague and says a small folding knife designed to fit in a purse or a pocket, right? What is yeah. a small folding knife to my law? Well, what, they, what, yes. What they what they do with uh, with our law and with a lot of laws, if you go to find out, is they will base a current decision or or a uh, whether or not they're going to take you to jail off of an old law. So if you bring a knife, if you bring a knife out and you get caught with it and it's four and a quarter inches or less, your lawyer has something to work with with that old law. Because I think in 2011, they changed that. They said it used to be four and a quarter inches in blade length. Now it's a small folding knife. So now it's up, up to their interpretation of what a small folding knife is. I will say this, though. If you have two models of knives, and I don't know whether the bug out mini and the bug out regular would fall into this. But if you have two different sizes and the bigger size right there says it on there, XL your lawyer might have a harder time defending right. you yep. in court. Right. But yeah. if it's the smaller model, you might be okay. Might. So, Cop, we had spoken about uh, a topic of our last show, and the topic of the last show was uh, blade maintenance and sharpening and, you know, taking care of your, your, your knives and swords. And, uh, and you had some input, I think, that you wanted to kind of contribute to. So, you know, shoot. So my input on sharpening and stuff is, is uh, the way that I was taught to sharpen a long time ago. My grandfather actually gave me a cheap knife, like $10 knife. And he took some sandpaper, some different grit sandpapers to show me what the different grits are and everything. Stapled that thing down to a workbench and had me sit there and sharpen a cheap knife. And every time I would come by, he'd give me a different knife or something, help me sharpen it. And I would progress to a finer grit sandpaper and then eventually it got to the point to where he introduced stones ceramic stuff like that as i got older and got a little bit more knowledgeable with stuff i actually had something happen over the weekend that's kind of a funny story uh i don't know i don't know if y'all remember i think it was in the comments that donnie and i were talking about trenching and digging with the war machine yeah well i kind of messed up fellas I didn't have the war machine on me over the weekend when I was doing my fireworks. And we had this big pyrotechnic that looked like a crayon with the plastic piece that you're supposed to jam into the ground. And it was kind of a leftover from last year and the plastic piece busted and my buddy didn't never use it. So I said, bring it out, you know, I'll try, I'll try to put it in there. You know, it's dark and everything. And I'm trying to jam this thing in the ground with the busted plastic piece. And I said, man, this ground's really hard. Let me try to, you know, let me try to get like a little, and this is all I had. Oh, man. Lo and behold, I don't know if y'all can see it, but I've got a little chip right there. It's dull as a spoon. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. So, if I would have had that, if I would have used my brain instead of this, I would have gotten a stick or something. But now I have to go practice that 
blade maintenance on that. I have to go sharpen it up. There you go. I like to freehand a lot of my stuff because I don't really use it like y'all do with, well, like Scab does with the chopping of the wood and everything. Right. I cut a lot of bags at work, a lot of real, real heavy duty bags. So edge retention, when I look at those steels and it has a really good edge retention, that's wonderful for me because I can sit there and cut all these bags open. So I'll cut all those bags open, come home at night, and I have a Spyderco sharp maker, and I don't even really use the guides in it. I just take it. I take the finest one. Eric, Eric actually bought me a strop too, and I use the strop occasionally. But something that my grandfather taught me is he said, when you go to sharpen these things, you want to keep the consistency, the same angle every time. And you don't ever want to force an edge on a knife. If you're pushing and grinding on that thing, it, it's going to, you know, after you put 50 strokes in it, if you mess up that angle and you do that one stroke or the wrong angle, you're done. You just got to start over again. Of course. But I do like to freehand it. I like to kind of hold it like this, which is completely different from everybody else that I've seen. And kind of just let the let the weight of it sit on there. And eyeball it. Some people use the guides and stuff. Some people use the guides or the work sharps or different things. This is what I do. I take this rod out of there and actually use it like that every time. I might hit it up three times on one side, three times on the other. And that's good for the rest of the week because I'm not doing anything really heavy duty. I'm cutting bags all week long. Cutting boxes, right. opening mail. So that's good enough for me. That's why this topic, the, these two topics that we actually opened up the show with are so damn interesting because you can have any guest on and they have their own. Well, I, I'm telling you, that's very interesting as far as with the sandpaper, how he taught you. That's mm -hmm. damn interesting. That's really a good way for you to start from the bottom and really learn what the grit and learn how to shop. And I think that's brilliant to have you move up from sandpaper all the way up. That's fantastic. Um, I think I'm going to go backwards and start over again and do it that way. But um, it's, it's two amazingly strong topics because everyone has their own ways of doing things. Everyone have their, has their own beliefs in how to shop and when to shop and, um, uh, in terms of their maintenance and it, everyday carries. I mean, everyone has their own outlook of it. So, guys, this, I will say this. Yeah. On, on that note, if you got two different methods of sharpening something and you change up your method like you try the sandpaper thing don't yes. be discouraged if you get a you know don't get the results that you want right because you're changing you don't have that consistency when you start out right you can sharpen things with sandpaper with stones with different things with work sharps if i went and i got a work sharp right now i'd probably destroy a knife because i don't know a thing about work sharps right but eric Man, I, I can't believe how th sharp he gets things. And he just says he's a normal guy with a work sharp. And I'm like, damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, That's he, sharp. Yeah, you can, <laughs> yeah, there's a skill set there. Trust me, because yeah. I have wrecked some really nice knives. Eric is so very there, modest. There is a skill set. He's very modest, but he uh, there is a skill set that you need. Um, you know, you, you see all these commercials and, and their advertisements for the workshop and a lot of, a lot of these shopping, sharpening systems. But you got to have a general skill set of how to sharpen and when to sharpen uh, before you go into it. So um, there's definitely a skill set that is needed uh, to, you know, be successful in, in keeping uh, your, your stuff maintained. But uh, guys, mm -hmm. this is a topic that is going to go on and on. It doesn't end with this show. It didn't end with last show. And I know it's not going to end with the next show. Uh, we're going to try, obviously, to always introduce new topics. But everyone is welcome to comment. Everyone is welcome to any, any guest that comes on is welcome to uh, giving their own input on these topics. Because th these, these, these are topics on this show that will continue to go on and on. And, and um, I'm, I'm very happy with that, that, you know, it's, it's something that can be discussed and further Blade, uh, it's analyzed. Endless. endless. It is endless. Yeah. Completely endless. So yeah, let's um let's go ahead and wrap this one, guys. I've enjoyed it. I I hope Cap, you'll come back. Um, Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you all for having me on here, man. This this oh, has man. been Love awesome. You. Cap, it, it, it keeps the community going. Uh, Joe, Cap, it, it was all say pleasure. Say what you're going to say and sign us out. Sure, Cap, it was all pleasure. Thank you for being here. Um, and again, 
I really do enjoy your YouTube channel. I get so much out of it, and I really recommend everyone out there who's not subscribed to Captain Electro, just for your, for me, for me to you to say, listen, you need to watch this guy. There's a lot of deep thought, a lot of things that he does to help you. He's helped me in 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 many ways in terms of the discussions that he brings up, especially on Mental Mondays. And I think you'll really get a lot out of his channel. And obviously. The description of this video we're going to be putting a link to captain letro's channel and please check it out so cap thank you for being here we really do appreciate it and we would love to have you back again thank you so absolutely sign good up. night guys we'll sign it off guys guys thanks for joining us at blade talk until the next show thanks for sticking around and watching we appreciate you being here and uh you have enjoyed the rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this thanks for joining us guys peace out